Good morning and welcome to another one of our station tours. So the official time is 9.14 a.m. We are going to be taking a tour of the Woodward Academy Rapid Transit Station. So Woodward Academy Rapid Transit Station is pretty much one of the newer stations on the Purple Line. Currently, it's um, one of the also most expanded stations, seeing how it used to have short platforms, but also has the longest platform of any heavy rail station. Right now, we are on the outside. By the way, that is the Woodward main campus buildings over there. So every single day, this is the train. This is where the school train will terminate and begin service. Cycle all the way to Kravitz Boulevard, where, of course, anyone who is in the uh, KRTA school transit program, we call it the school transit program, they will catch these services and they will be brought here or picked up from here, taking the loop all the way down to Kravitz Boulevard. So here, um, we have just entered the station pretty easily, might I add. This station does not have proper wayfinding nor fair gates. That is one of the most common problems with these newer non-finished or refurbished stations. They do not have the appropriate architecture that you will need in a transit station. A good fare gate line is here. That is an elevator. It's not marked. As you can see, peak is just ending. That is why there is so few traffic at the station. Woodward Station is actually up there in the top 10 busiest KRTA stations. And for good reason, the 5 train, although it doesn't stop here, many people will transfer to the purple from the 1 to get onto the 5 train. Remember how we said how confusing Cosmos Church Station was? Well, it's so confusing that many people who use the 1 every day have no idea that the 4 even stops there. Or they know, but it's more convenient to just travel to Woodward make your cross-platform transfer onto the purple, and then your same platform transfer onto the five. That's right, we don't say orange, we say five. Orange, so, orange refers to the line itself, the tracks. Five usually interlines, and that is a fun notation about our color and numbering systems. So each and every line in the KRTA network has been assigned a color. Color trains only run on one given line. Numbered trains typically will run on two or three lines. So let's say, for example, the one train runs on the gray line as well as the lime line you've never heard of the lime line but it is a real place as well as the orange line so the orange line is the two center tracks if you've ever been down to aiden hills you'll see that it's like most downtown stations two platform tracks two in the middle the platform tracks is the lime line the two center tracks is the orange line so because it is so difficult trying to figure this out, it's more logical to have a numbering system for trains that connects and run across multiple lines and a coloring system for one train that only ever stays on one line. So we have checked out the platform, the northbound platform, the southbound platform, excuse me, it checks to be pretty good. As you see, Woodward Station is a pretty unique station because just the way of the design, it's a pretty unique architecturally designed station. 
the walkways are almost in a maze form but this was done on purpose to prevent bottlenecks as you can see the way the platforms are distributed it kind of forces people that come up one set of stairs to walk around a different way to get out of the station instead of everyone congregating together creating huge bottlenecks so these are also narrow walkways giving people virtually no reason to hang around many people they get upstairs and they just want to go somewhere else as quick as possible for a station like this this design is very effective people spend more time wandering around on the platforms or outside and not on the mezzanine concourse area this right here is actually an overview map of the station one of very few in the KRTA network so you can see this is what it looks like from the roof this is the strode that is outside four lanes going four lanes coming with the center double turning lane that everyone hates it's a one-way turn into the parking lot this is where we entered we are up here now these are where people will exit the stations these are your metro card machines these are your skylights to allow light to get to platform level and these are just people's houses back here so this is your map to this station from the rooftop and as you can see these skylights it's always important anytime you see a skylight anywhere make sure it's not flooded make sure it's not cracked broken or anything because as you can see the skylights are very important because they allow light to enter the station and they provide a wealth of sunlight to the platforms they kind of change the way the station looks during the day compared to at night more unmarked elevators, unmarked stairwells, no wayfinding signage. Again, it's a very common problem in our newer stations where they were just in such a hurry to open that the signs haven't even been made at headquarters and delivered. The fair gates are supposed to go here. How can you tell when you're in a new KRTA station versus an old KRTA station? You will see the entrance ways look more like little tiny hallways to enter the station. That means they're designed for a line of fair gates. Older KRTA stations will typically come with doors and narrow entry points. Those older stations do not account for fair gates. As you can see here, it's the same thing over here. So this station again, pretty new, has a more neoclassical design. You can stand here and you can see the platforms, you can see Wayside. Again, remember what they say, if you open anything, a gate, a door, a fence, if you open something and you see tracks, you're Wayside. So don't go there, don't mess with it. We are, again, in part one, we did mention that people are getting arrested for this trespassing stuff. We do not tolerate it on our system. So as you can see here, more residential side. This is a residential area. This is considered a neighborhood station as well. As a matter of fact, this station was even designed in such a way to try to blend in with the houses that are on the streets. So this is your typical neighborhood station. The station garden project has also came past the station too. Some stations do not have a station garden. A lot of your suburban stations will have a station garden, those in neighborhoods. But this is an unassuming station. Many people will never look at this station and think that this is a rapid transit station. A lot of people would think that this is someone's house or maybe a grocery store, but to hear subway station, no. This is actually getting to be a pretty common design on the KRTA network because 
We want our stations to look more inviting. We also need them to be ADA friendly. Talking to you stairs. So, if we want that stuff, we have to uh, be willing to invest more. So as you see here, we're going down a staircase. And the reason why we're doing this, because today, um, so it's not on this platform, it's actually on the school train platform. So the thing about the school train platform, it is undone. I don't know how, I think that's a construction worker, but they're not in their vest. Though. Yeah, you can't be over there without PPE. It's closed. There's no stairwell. As a matter of fact, there is a build out for the stairwell here and here. There's also one there. But we're going to take this um, construction worker on the elevator, go downstairs. This is the school train platform. That's gonna basically play host to the majority of the school trains activities. Now, why do we need a whole entire platform dedicated to the school train service? In reality, it's really overflow. So see, in the morning, every morning, you're gonna have extra school trains. The platform here gets so extremely crowded that to add the extra crowding from the schools starting and stopping all over the city, most of that traffic comes through here, it just wouldn't be safe. So a general rule of thumb is, and when we think school train, many people think it's just Woodward Academy, which is upstairs and down the street. No, that's one out of 12 different schools, colleges, universities, that will dump people off here. Because this is where it all starts. It all starts here. Regional school train service also ends here. So that's why it's an extreme crowded place. So having the extra platforms is beneficial. So this station tour, this station is a pretty much a little more simple. You do have a lot of different things. Um... You're probably wanting to know where are some of the more ancillary rooms. Again, not all the stations have them. Some stations do have them into some quite restricted areas. Like where we are right now, it is a restricted area. As you can see, I'm going to try to see if I can find the fence line. There is no fence line at all. And the reason why there isn't a fence line, yeah, that's the road right there. So there isn't a fence line because although this area is technically considered restricted, it is not considered wayside because trains and their equipment has no access to this area. As a matter of fact, the fence line for wayside is actually right here. So that means over this fence, there's the tracks. If you open anything up, if you go through a gate, a fence, or a hole in it, a wall, a door, anything, and you see these tracks, just know you are wayside. There's also tracks over there, and likewise a fence. You are wayside. So, again, ancillary rooms, they look just the same as they do. Cosmos Church Station. They're supposed to be kept at 75 de Oh, here's the HVAC running. So if the HVAC is running, you're all good to go. You're in the TCR. Let's go in the electrical room. This is the electrical room. You have all the electrical cabinets. Never ever touch anything. 200,000 volts in some cabinets. And the offers is just um, 750 to run the trains. Um, You do have your... TPSS, Traction Power Substation. They're typically, so you're not really going to see much of those because those rooms are typically located underneath platforms. You almost always have to use a ladder to access those rooms. Those rooms are pretty much, yes, they're tip, pretty much always going to be underneath platforms. At Woodward, 
station, it's in a pretty funny place. So you see that triangle right there, the attic, the awning? So there's actually rooms up in that triangle in the roof. So we call it the attic. There are actually rooms in the attic. Now to access the attic, they can only be accessed through one of these pillars here that goes up into the attic. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a hassle, maybe on a future station tour, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do, we typically in stations like these, where stuff is stored underneath the platforms. Usually when the platforms are real wide, that can happen. Because one thing about a platform, if you open up a platform, you're typically going to have a duct bank. One for the platform screen doors and pretty much another one for everything else. You're going to have a duct bank underneath the first few feet of the platform. This brick line actually marks the edge of the duct bank. So this one at Woodward is pretty huge, because usually they only take up one space. They're normally hidden underneath some permazine blocks, and that's pretty much it. So that's your duck bank. But at this particular station, again, the station tour wasn't that long, because it's, um, I mean, it's not a whole lot. The train might have just left because there's a lot of people wandering around down there and they're leaving the station. So, yeah. That's your tour of the Woodward Station. We're actually going to take a little walk up the street to see what I'm talking about when I say that a lot of the alignment happens here. And most of that alignment pretty much goes right where we're going to this station in the morning but then the majority of your traffic gets on a different train and they go downtown to access areas usually south downtown we call it the education district because you have Kravitz Academy, Greenville University Chattanooga College Hunter College, Techwood Academy and then you have your public high schools and everything so this is pretty much what you're going to see a lot of when you're going through here. So if you ask me at um, BIOS, um, at the BIOS Cosmos Church building, which as you can see is right up the street. Yeah, at the BIOS Cosmos Church building which you can see is pretty much up that street. If you watch a streetcar video, you'll see there are schools in, in that building as well. So it's a huge educational district. A lot of colleges, universities. So this is like the main campus and everything we're walking down. Um, I'm going to turn around and walk back out because... In this day and age, you just walked onto a school campus. That's some you're asking for some trouble. I'm gonna go around. And as you can see, it's a, it's a, a little different neighborhoods so when you're walking down the street. This is actually 23rd Street. So 23rd Street typically goes downtown. But this is a more undeveloped part of the city though. Because what you're going to start to see in some years, you will start to see a large amount of development. Some, not really skyscrapers. So the city of Alex World does have a project that involves a lot of skyscrapers. This is not one of those projects that are being proposed. But to let you know, um... There's still going to be a lot of development in this area. A new, another stadium could end up getting built in this area. So things are just kind of just going up. Over there, that big building over there, you may not see it too well, but that's the city um, of Melchizedek Detention Center. That's your road. 
over here is pretty well. So here's something interesting. This is a pretty interesting feature when you look through the city. So you do have a marina, and this is just for fun. This is owned by the KRTA. This is really nothing more than almost like a mere toy. You still have your requirements, though. This is a ferry. So we have experimental ferry service. The reason why we say experimental, even though it is permanent, is strictly because if we were to ever try to connect, um, we, we want to run a service from Richmond up to the shipping point port in the city of, in the Linden Hall neighborhood. But it is almost impossible to do because it's mostly water. You can't run a train on water. Well, you can, but it's just cheaper to use boats instead. So, this is an experiment to see the visibility of this. If it works well, we'll open even more lines. And we'll keep on with this type of service. So, it is fare free. There are no fares. So, what you would do, you would enter through here. It's closed at night, by the way. So, that's why it's gates there and all. A ferry would pull up here. This is the map of the service. So right now you are here. And the other station is up there. This. Um, I think this is a close up. Yeah. It may be a close up. I think it's a close up. I'm not sure. No. Okay, either way. If you're on the ferry, you still have to wear a mask. It's still KRTA property, so don't even try to get out of there in a mask. If you enter the ferry, which is a boat for now, ferry will take you through the canal. These strobe lights that are in the bottom of the canal they to let the ferry operators know to stay to their right. So they work similar to um, traffic dividers, but uh, they're a little bit different at the same time. Like the yellow line in the street. So... Pulled in. Now you're at the other side, and you see yourself on the map here. So this ferry station is a little different. And as you can see, you come up on street level. This is a crosswalk warning people to slow down. The street design is also a little different too because as you can see, these are your express lanes of traffic while these are your local. So you can't park your, you can park your car to the side, but here you are sharing the road with bicycles, usually it's when you turn it off. If you know you're not turning off anytime soon, then you will be in these two lanes. So that's kind of how the traffic works. This is city of Durdensville, by the way. So Durdensville, the traffic laws are pretty different. So a lot of the roads you will encounter in Durdensville is um, like this. So it's not two ways and then you park your cars on the side. No, you park on the brick. You share with bicycles, wagons, everything on the brick. The brick is usually going to be around 15 miles per hour while you're... Um, regular four-lane heavy traffic is going to be that much different. So that's Aiden Hill Station. It's a legacy station, so uh, we're not ready to tour that one yet. We've done the station tours for today. But I just thought I'd let you know regarding the Aiden Hill Station. So now we're walking uh, towards our 
downtown neighborhood. So this includes the stadium. What you're looking at, this big red and white building is actually, we call it the um, reverse red velvet cake building. It's a joke. Obviously, you do not want to go. You see how tiny those windows are? That is the city jail. Yes. That is the city of Melchizedek detention center. That is a jail. It is 2,400 inmates. That's about half as much as the other jail, which is 3,000 inmates. Combined is as half as much as the big jail in Linden Hall, which is 5,000 inmates. So we want to cross the street. So we're going to push the light, the um, crosswalk, and it's going to, you're going to see something amazing here. So now you do get to cross because it's saying you can cross. So now you cross the street and now look, you're finished crossing, right? It's red again. Traffic can go. You want to cross again? Press the button. Wait for it to give you that crawl, walk light. You cross. Traffic is stopped. You still have to look both ways. But once you cross, you're not in the circuit anymore. It just turns red. Traffic is allowed to go again. So that is a working crosswalk, which is pretty unique because the city of Durdensville does have a lot of those working crosswalks. So again, when in the city of Durdensville, it's a different place. The traffic patterns are different. When you get downtown though, you'll see a lot of roads like this where you're ending up walking on the edge of the road because there's no sidewalk. Down there's a stadium, War Memorial Park, Barfield Arena, and Confirmation Park. We are supposed to be touring the uh, Barclay Center Station soon, but how soon I have no idea. So you have Hotel Marriott Hotels. Hotels by Wyndham now. So you have Hotels by Wyndham. It's a company, Hotels by Wyndham. So, yeah. This is another streetcar stop, by the way. But this streetcar line is unfinished. This is the Melchizedek Detention Center. High-rise parking garage. So people would come off of this train. They'll leave. It's a high-rise parking. You see, you go up that hill. Now you're downtown. That's This is Greenville Academy, Chattanooga University, Hunter College. The tall building right there is an office building. KRTA headquarters is in its own building. But the KRTA headquarters actually used to be in a small building behind this garage. And then it was in the first lower floors of this tall building. And then it was spread out throughout the entire Grand Central Hunter College complex. And now it is um pretty much just, you know, it's just pretty much... Yeah, this is another streetcar stop, but for a completely different streetcar line, by the way. So as you can see, $1 mobility fare, $1.25 full fare, children under 12 ride free. Again, this is the jail. Do not go to this jail or any other. You do not want to be in jail. This is your courthouse. If anyone wants to sue you, that's where you end up. This is a public transportation video, so we're not going to talk about corrections in this video. But what we will do, we're going to do a little jaywalking. And we're going to do it again because, um, well, 
nothing that can really be done about it. That's kind of the consequences when you build a rapid transit station and the streetcar hub and you have no way for people to... Oh, there is a crosswalk. Because, see, that's only for streetcars. You're not supposed to walk in there. That's only streetcars. So... When you cross the street, as you can see, that's where all of your streetcars are. A lot of streetcars will come out of um, Grand Central Hunter College. It's a big place. This is the Grand Central Hunter College streetcar stop. A lot of activity happens here. As you continue walking, you are allowed to cross streetcar alignment. Do not touch this switch. If you derail a streetcar, it's going to be a problem. Again, we're not kidding when we say jail. You just saw the jail. We're crossing. And now we're going to enter into the Grand Central Hunter College Station Complex. So if you are keeping up with the renovation, you'll see that this station has been heavily renovated. Oh, I was getting ready to say, was this a fire alarm going off? Yeah, this station has received some heavy renovations. So it looks a little more like a real... Um, efficient hub of course this is a street entrance where we went through was over there there's another one here this is your first a and c is so for the street cars only there's two more street cars will stop on this level also so now that makes six street cars Did I tell you that all the streetcars terminate? We just redid our priest, our police precinct. We also redid the rotunda. And you see it's an older station because as you can see, this does not accommodate the line of fare gates that you typically need at a rapid transit station. Some debate was even to put the fare gates here so that we could squeeze in more and increase capacity, which I honestly agree with that assessment because the whole purpose of widening the rotunda again for the fourth time, the original rotunda used to only be right where this gray strip was. And then it was widened to the first line here, and then it was widened again to this gray strip, only to be widened again to where it, where you see today. So the whole purpose of widening the rotunda is to allow better transfers from your local to regional to your brown trains. So as you see, you know, uh, when you bust through the gate like that, it doesn't um, really let you. Wayfinding is pretty good in this station. Some of the sign, like this is an outdated sign because you no longer have DLR service. These are your north and south red line platforms. So you go downstairs. These are your north and south purple line platforms. So as you see, Grand Central Hunter College can be air conditioned. And this is part of the reason why. Not much air is escaping. When the station's deep on the ground, heat doesn't just exit the station as easily. The station is sealed, and it is also deep. As you see, we are at below your average sea level. Therefore, your station is technically deep enough to be air conditioned. This eastbound platform very crowded during peak 
so much so that there are restrooms on this platform. Grand Central Hunter College, one thing you'll notice, there is a lot of restrooms. Why? Because Grand Central Hunter College um, has so much um, service and patrons that putting restrooms periodically throughout the station is the only way to avoid some of the incidents you have where there is. There's another restroom right here too. The lights are off in this restroom. Absolutely not allowed. The doors aren't locked either. Lights off, doors unlocked. It's a very horrible um, combination. You do not want that. There we go. Pipe chase. This is another platform. Upstairs. This exit, this takes you to another exit. The Alex World Avenue exit, it is called. You have three restaurants on this level, as well as Bennett's Bar. So you do have quite a few things on this level. Now remember, if you do go to Bennett's Bar, you are prohibited from carrying open containers of alcohol onto our buses, trains, streetcars, and ferries. This is also a different level. This takes you to our enhanced bus service loop. When you enter the station, you will enter from that advanced service loop here. These are our buses. A lot of buses that go throughout downtown are articulated. Right now, these bus articulated buses are being stored at Woodward, but you will have a another bus garage being built to store just those. The plan is for the new development project at Alex World and for the city of Melchizedek proper to have articulated buses serve those regions. If you get down here now, you will see that it's a corridor full of rooms. So what are all these? What are in all these rooms? Well, all of these are offices. It's a long line of fair gates. And just some stuff. Again, this used to be headquarters. If you go through here, some doors, you'll work your way into Tower 3. Right now we're back in Tower 1. Here is something pretty interesting about the streetcar platform. If you look, this is a room. A lot of these rooms will be locked most of the time. You could pretty much see all of the beams and the pipe work and the guts of the station if you look through this window. Now, I don't know how the elevator, there we go. Elevator opened up. Um, yeah, you, yeah. It's taking a while, but is it? I'm wondering what I want to know if the elevator is even working because only one sleeve open, which is quite concerning for me. Think I should just get off? Pushing all these buttons, nothing's working. Um, I think I better get off this elevator. <laughs> I mean, the door is once leave open.
I don't know what's wrong with this elevator, but it's not working. It says right now, what does it say? It says you're on the second floor. This one of those high capacity elevators as well. Because a lot of them would be probably about the size of this. So there's some pretty big elevators too. It, uh, I've seen bigger though. The one at World Trade Center, they're pretty huge. Okay, so um, the door's closed and it took me down to one, but it's not letting me out the elevator. dicey now wouldn't let me out it wouldn't let me off check out national rail side so all of these are storefronts it's a chapel there's two restaurant spaces in here library the library is open used to be a conference room customer service and then on this side you have your regional rail so this is your regional rail side so you see how dark it is up here safety hazard and you see how many restrooms are passing too there's no excuse. There's some offices with cubicles in it. We're going through the oldest part of the station, which is right here. See that street right there? Small parking lot because this used to be an older part of the station. This is actually Alex World Avenue, too. Which that's gonna be another station we do one day as well. But for now, I think we've gone on long enough. 43 minutes is quite a while. So we're gonna go ahead and terminate here. Kinda take a look downstairs and see what we are offering out of the station as far as transportation. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.